Anna, what are your thoughts on the newly christened Cleveland Guardians? Well, did you watch the video that they put out announcing I their did. name? I did. So, I mean, I understand the Guardians just because it is something that's like to a nod to the city itself. But like, come on, this is a really bad choice. Although props for getting Tom Hanks to narrate your video. <laughs> everyone brandon first aka first report representing the first off the bench podcast network welcome into another edition of the change up here on the network we break down everything baseball and softball has to offer for us and of course when i say we i mean my co-host who i will um i guess officially congratulate on air it was a little while ago that i did congratulate her on her new job opportunity in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, going to be working for the Star Herald. Uh, congratulations, Brianna, on um, moving towards, you know, what obviously you want to do for the rest of your life. Uh, and really, um, I think for Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, getting a, a fantastic journalist uh, going to be covering uh, the things going on there. So Brianna, A, how are you doing? Um, and B, obviously, congratulations. Well, first, thank you. Second, I'm really glad I don't have to build any more furniture because that was all last week, aside from having to drive everything from California to ne Western Nebraska. I mean, I'm going to the first event that I'm covering somewhat tonight with the guy I'm replacing. So, I mean, we'll see how that goes. But next week I should be all on my own with the freelancers and all of that. So we'll see. <laughs> Definitely. And there's never a better time to uh, follow Brianna. You can follow or you can find Brianna on Twitter at bwinner12. You'll be able to, uh, I'm sure she'll be sharing all her articles or I'll point you in the right direction of all the stuff she'll be doing. And I think, uh, look, if you're in the Nebraska area, you, you got a good one, folks. I, I don't think she'll be there too long. I think, uh, you know, three or four years, she'll be moving on to uh, bigger, uh, bigger pastures. But for now, you got a real, real good one. Um, and uh, congratulations again to Brianna. Uh, and now looking ahead here to this changeup, we will be doing the, the usual three up, three down. Of course, the Padre Report with myself, Brianna, will take us into the winner's circle and talk about the Angels. We got um, some, of course, nickname or uh, mascot changes out in Cleveland. Of course, a little bit of softball, gold medal news from the Olympics. But we are going to start Major League Baseball um, off the field slash kind of on the field. It is, of course, the trade deadline. We are recording July 27th, four days before the trade deadline hits. Uh, and really, if you're a baseball fan, uh, this is the time, you know, kind of after the All-Star break or after the All-Star game, the next question is who will be traded? We have a, some questions answered, um, some surprises, some not big time surprises, but Atlanta obviously reacting to the um, Ronald Acuna injury. They also lost Travis Darno uh, earlier this year. Jock Peterson and Stephen Boat both come into Atlanta. Um, Nelson Cruz, obviously the twins, who we will get to later. Uh, they've been struggling mightily, uh, so there's no point for them to hold on to some of their uh, better players. They ship Nelson Cruz to Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay kind of goes the opposite way, uh, sells Rich Hill or uh, trades Rich Hill to the New York Mets. Um, and then some news from the Washington Nationals, nothing definitive, but according to the general manager and the brass in Washington, everyone uh, not named Juan Soto is available. That of course means not only Mad Max, who I think most people expected uh, to be on the trade, uh, trade block, but also Trey Turner. Uh, which, I mean, with all due respect to Trevor Story, I think Trey Turner would probably be the top shortstop available, if that is truly the case. Uh, but Brianna, what are your thoughts on kind of the early parts of these uh, trades and, and kind of looking ahead to 
what um, what is coming. And just a heads up, I do know there was a trade with the Padres. I will get to that in my report. So, but anyways, Brianna, your thoughts. I mean, th I think Atlanta got a good one. I mean, the Cubs are going downhill quick. So Jock Peterson going to Atlanta was probably the best call. I believe somebody else is going to be leaving Chicago. I don't know who it is though, but I do believe that someone will get traded, whether it's Bryant, Baez, Rizzo, or anybody else from that core team. I know uh, the, I forgot who got him, but one of the pitchers from the Cubs has been traded. I forgot where he went though. Oh, was it, um, is it the guy with the great hair and the great facial hair? <laughs> Schaffin, I think. Yeah. Schaffin, yeah. I don't remember where he went though. Um, so, I mean, it's in full swing. We just have to watch out for more to come. Max Scherzer, I don't know what, what's gonna happen. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't get traded, but if he does get traded, where do you see him going? Uh, you know, from all I've seen and heard, the West Coast is the most, um, I guess, talked about. Personally, the one place that scares me more than anywhere else is the San Francisco Giants. I think if San Francisco Giants can get Max Scherzer, that's a bit of a game changer for them. Um, that's scary when you can go Scherzer, Gosman, Cueto um, in a three-game series or, you know, five-game series in the playoffs uh, over a seven-game series later on. That's unfortunate. Now, as, as of, I believe, um, Sunday night, Saturday or Sunday night, I was reading on Twitter um, that the Padres were very close to acquiring Max Scherzer. Apparently, jerks in pro far and a prospect were the haggling points. Um, now, I haven't seen anything since, so I don't know if that was either false or if it stopped, um, but we'll see. I think if Max Scherzer does go, like I said, to the Giants, that's devastating. I think the Dodgers have to be in the mix now. Look, they've already lost Dustin May. Trevor Bauer, that's probably not happening anytime soon. We have heard absolutely no news from that. Um, which in his case, and, you know, really the, the, obviously everyone's case is not great. Um, but the Dodgers are probably in that mix as well. The one thing I will say, it's going to cost you a lot to get Max Scherzer. It's not going to be just kind of like what you said. I, I think the nationals, they are perfectly fine holding on to Max Scherzer. If they hold on to Max Scherzer, they can sit there at their fan base and say, look, we're in the NL East. We still you know, we still believe we have a chance, whether that's true or not. Uh, Max Scherzer doesn't have to be dealt. Now, switching to the other side, Trevor Story for me, I don't understand the positive of keeping a Trevor Story. Now, obviously, I know the Rocky fans maybe would disagree and say, hey, you know, he's our best player. But, but look, he is not coming back next year, period. He will be a free agent. And the Rockies can try and offer him, you know, all the money in the world. He will not go back there. He has already said he's not going back to Colorado. He wants to go somewhere to compete. Um, so if you're the Rockies, this is your chance to kind of turn in a few prospects. This is a rebuild in Colorado. And I'll be honest, I've been a little bit surprised. And um, they're not very good, but they're better than I thought in Colorado. Um, it's an opportunity to kind of start the rebuild. Bring in a couple pitchers, young pitchers. Get them acclimated to the um, altitude, things like that. I really do think. Trevor Story should be traded, um, but I agree with you on the Cubs, actually. Perfect, as you said. One of those three um, is going to be traded. It has to be um, at this point. Obviously, a lot changed in the last two weeks with the struggles that the Cubs had, um, but that'll be very interesting. We're very, very close to the end here, and um, it, it all gets a little crazy. It seems like everybody, it's kind of like the procrastinator's um, I was a professional procrastinator in high school. I would leave it to the very last minute. And that kind of is what the trade deadline is. It always kind of comes down to the last minute. But um, let me ask you this. As a Cubs fan, um, you have those three. Which one, um, I guess, are you okay with losing out of those three? Brian. <laughs> wow. Boom. No hesitation. Oh, and, uh, no thought. Boom. I love it. And Chapin went to the A's for two minor leaguers. That's a nice pickup for the A's. 
that's a, that's a really nice pickup for the A's. So moving on, uh, it is a opportunity now to talk about the name change in Cleveland. Of course, uh, we do have the situation of, you know, obviously the formerly known Washington Redskins that came out um, there. They had to drop their logo. Um, and I think uh, the, the next obvious domino to fall in that was, of course, the Indians. It was announced, I believe, earlier this year or late last year that the team would be changing their name um, heading into the 2022 season. Uh, instead of going the route of the Washington football team, they actually make the announcement before um, there's any turnover. And it is, of course, the Cleveland Guardians. Um, we talked about this, I want to say in the off season, at some point, we kind of had a little bit of a discussion of what certain names, um, they, they should have. I don't think the guardians were ever brought up, um, ever, not only just here, but anywhere. I'll tell you what, the first thing that I saw when I saw their logo and everything, um, it's kind of like on, on certain video games, they won't have like the likeness or the name rights to the actual team. So like, for example, they'll They'll, um, they'll call the, the Padres the San Diego Friars. Everyone knows they're trying to say Padres, but they don't have the likeness. They don't have the, the rights to put that logo in and things like that. So they'll call it kind of an offsetting and, and make the logo very similar, but different. That's kind of what I feel is going on here. The logo looks pretty much this, not obviously Chief Wahoo, but the colors are all the same. The logos pretty much look the same. Personally, I think they really missed the chance to take a nod to their baseball history. I think they should have been called the Cleveland Spiders or even the Cleveland Clowns, who were, I believe, a um, very popular um, Negro League team. And that's kind of, you know, I think that would have been something. But at the same time, you know, you kind of want a ferocious mascot. I don't know if the Clowns are one of them. But Brianna, what are your thoughts on the newly christened Cleveland Guardians? Well, did you watch the video that they put out announcing I their did. name? I did. So, I mean, I understand the Guardians just because it is something that's like to a nod to the city itself. But like, come on, this is a really bad choice. Although props for getting Tom Hanks to narrate your video. Yeah, um, it, it, it's it's very interesting. I would have preferred the gladiators, you know, something like that. I don't know, guardians. Um, I feel like, you know, this is uh, the next step is getting a deal with Disney Marvel. And, and all of a sudden we're going to have guardians of the galaxy every three nights. Um, you know, you got, uh, 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 what do you call it? Rocket the raccoon um, as the mascot. You know, I don't know. I, I, I think they missed a chance here. Now, in terms of changing the name, look, whether you agree with it or not, this is the climate we are in now. Um, they're not going to allow that. Now, I did read something. I wasn't able to uh, confirm it, but apparently the Cleveland Indians were named after a um, Native American who played for their team. Um, personally, I hate the word Indian. Um, not, obviously, look, if you're from India, you know, you are Indian. But um, I, I don't like when people call Native American Indians because obviously Christopher Columbus expected to land in India, uh, hence why he called them Indians. They aren't Indians, they're Native Americans. But um, this was a situation that had to happen uh, in the climate we're in. But like I said, I think the ball was dropped a little bit on the changing of the mascot, but who knows? Maybe we'll uh, figure, uh, it'll, it'll kind of grow on us here. But I did see one funny tweet. I do believe it came from someone um, from the Cubs side of things, but it said, how can you call your team the Guardians when they couldn't even protect a 3-1 World Series lead? So um, yeah, that was that was a nice one that I know uh, Brianna is getting a nice little chuckle out of as I did as well. But moving on, uh, going all the way across the world, not country, the world, heading to Tokyo to talk about the softball gold medal game. Obviously, um, as I say, we, we were recording here on July 27th. Earlier this morning, um, the United States fell to Japan uh, two to nothing in the gold medal game, giving Japan their second straight gold and um, their the final gold, at least for the foreseeable future uh, in the Olympics, as uh, we will not see softball or baseball in 
Paris, uh, but we will see breakdancing. That's interesting. Anyways, uh, but Brianna, this is your realm. What are your thoughts? USA falling to Japan. Well, obviously I didn't watch this game because it was at five in the morning mountain time. Um, but I did watch the U.S. versus Japan on Sunday when they were ending pool play. Um, the U.S. ended up getting home, the home team in this gold medal match because they went five and zero. Oh. They ended up beating Japan in a walk-off fashion, two to one. So it just hurts that they lost to Japan again, and this is their second straight silver medal after they had been dominating the sport the prior Olympics and was getting gold every single time until 2008. Yes, I hate the fact that Paris is getting rid of softball, baseball. I understand Europe is not that big of a baseball, softball area, although Italy did have a team in the Olympics, but I'm sure we'll see it again in 2028 when it is in Los Angeles. Because again, the United States, softball, baseball world. Yeah. I agree. And, 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 you know, for USA softball, this is unfortunate. Um, obviously this is kind of the pinnacle. This is what everyone wants. The gold medal silver is probably a little bit bittersweet, but I will say for the game of softball, I think this is good. This is now the second straight year that Japan has won softball gold. Um, and, and I think anytime you can get a sport that, you know, look, it, it's similar to now basketball is a little different. Um, because the NBA is so prominent in our heads. Um, but, you know, when you, when you see France beating USA uh, basket, men's basketball, you know, that's something that, hey, you know what, you can kind of go, it's unfortunate for USA, but for worldwide basketball, that's great news. And for Japan, obviously a baseball and now softball crazy country, they get their second straight um, gold medal. I will say one thing though, and Brianna, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. This is the Olympics. As I said, this is the pinnacle of Japan and U.S., those softball players and all the softball participants, the pinnacle of their careers, or at least at at this moment, I would assume it's the pinnacle of their careers. Can we find a softball stadium for them to play in? I mean, my goodness, it was to, to, to put them on a baseball field where it was it was hard to follow the game because they're, they're, the bases aren't, you know, where I, I just don't understand how this is the Olympics. There are no fans in the arena or at least, you know, in ma- mass capacity, maybe a little bit of fa- family. I don't even know about that. But so we're not worried about capacity. I could understand if, hey, we want to have it in, you know, whatever the Tokyo uh, Dome, whatever. And I know that's not the case, but so we can have a ton of fans. Um, but that wasn't the case. You can't find a softball field for these women to play on. Um, I think that was, I don't know. And I haven't played softball, um, but it, it just seemed like a little bit of a disservice for the Olympic gold medal game to be played essentially on a baseball field um, with, a, with a softball field erected on it. But uh, Brianna, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that had any bearing um, or am I just, making too much of this oh well before i get into that answer uh canada did get the bronze in 10-4 uh they beat mexico three to two. Oh, so a lot better of a game um yeah. i know that they have fields out there because when i was watching sunday's game they were mentioning how uh cat osterman or i think it was cat osterman it was either her or monica abbott uh they w- had been teammates with a lot of these japanese players because just like with baseball, they have a ton of soft professional softball leagues. Um, obviously we have like eight professional teams here in the US, but in Los Angeles, we know that there's going to be a ton of fields that they could use. The most prominent one being UCLA. So maybe because of weather, I know that there were some weather issues out there for a bit. So maybe that had something to do with not using the dirt, but otherwise I don't really know because I do know that they have a ton of fields out there. Yeah. But go- speaking of the Olympics, though, I never knew that canoe slalom was a thing <laughs> until I actually watched it. <laughs> There's a lot of um, events in the Olympics that. Uh, th- there are a lot of Olympic events that you were very. So I don't know if it's still on there. I haven't seen it in a couple Olympics, but speed walking um, is one of them. That's always one of my favorite ones to at least, you know, whatever. But yeah, there are a lot of 
uh, very random Olympic events. Um, of course, I don't know. For me, I'm one of those weird guys. I prefer the Winter Olympics. I don't know. I, I'm a big curling guy. I, I try not to miss any curling. Um, and then uh, I, I, I think Olympic hockey is uh, really one of the best things out there as well. But anyways, um, moving away from Tokyo, a little bit closer to home. Uh, it is, of course, you know, look, the, the, the winter circle may have moved uh, a little bit east uh, to the Midwest in Nebraska, but the topic remains the same. Her heart moved to the Midwest, but her uh, head will always be with her Anaheim Angels. Uh, or at least Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, as I get it right there. But Brianna, we'll step into the winner's circle. What's going on with those Angels? Um, well, I'm going to start off going back to the home run derby. Um, so Dodgers' Justin Turner did clear something up about the phone call that Otani had gotten. It was not from Mike Trout. It was actually from Albert Pujols. So I'm going to just go to this website really quickly to get the quote. Um, so I were to call them basically said first minute and a half, he was pulling every single ball foul. So when he called him, he basically told Otani to stop trying to pull everything. He's like, dude, you have juice to left center, hit the ball to the middle of the field. And it looked like it worked until it didn't um, in the sudden death, but it is what it is. At least he listened because <laughs> he would not have even made it to the sudden death if he did not get those words of wisdom. Um, so go, now going to Mike Trout, um, he is still not feeling 100%. He has not started his rehab assignment. Um, he is still feeling the strained calf, so he's going to go see a doctor on Monday. So there is no timetable right now as to when he is going to come back. I was so hoping he would because then maybe the Angels would have just kept going up with him in there. Um, so, cause especially since they are four games back of the Mariners for third place in the American league West, um, in Trout's place, um, outfielder Brandon Marsh did make his MLB debut last week. He has since played in eight games. He's seven for 29 with three runs and a 143, um, batting average. This is starting to turn out a little bit like Joe Adele. I think the nerves definitely got to him. So maybe now that he's played he's like a few games in, it would disappear. So, I mean, that's something to keep an eye on as we get, go forward and the rest, uh, excuse me, with the rest of the season. Um, but since the all-star week, the Angels went one and two versus the Mariners, oh and two against the A's, three and one against the Twins. And going off on the Twins on Saturday, Sandoval did have a no-hit bid going into the ninth inning. He did pitch, pitch eight and two-thirds, uh, he only gave up one hit, one earned run, one walk, and he had 13 strikeouts. Going into Sunday, Otani hit his 35th home run in the sixth inning. And then last night, they did beat the Rockies 6-2. to two. Otani pitched seven innings, gave up five hits, one earned run, uh, didn't give up a single walk, which is amazing for him, and did have five strikeouts. Otani recorded his 100th strikeout of the season to end the seventh inning. He only allowed three runs in 20 innings pitched in the last two starts and only gave up one walk during that time. So they'll finish off the series with the Rockies tomorrow before going into a four game series versus the A's Thursday through Sunday. Well, hopefully uh, the Padres can uh, can soften the A's up for you in the next couple of days. But that's going to be a really – this is – you talked about it. I think um, the last uh, changeup we did, you talked about how right out of the All-Star break, the Angels have a chance to either rise or fall. Now, the Twins notwithstanding, that was a nice little three out of four for them. But uh, these, these pretty much, you know, six, seven games with both the A's and the Mariners, their chance to move up or down and unfortunately uh, – you know, it, it's not gone the direction they've wanted it to. And the unfortunate thing is they don't get a day off until the August 9th, um, right after their two games or three game series with the Dodgers. After the A's, they have the Rangers and then the Dodgers. Oof. So they get at least a little bit of an easy series before having to face their freeway rivals. And that will be in Anaheim or Los Angeles? Los Angeles. Go. Yikes. So again, they're not getting a day off until the ninth. Yeah. 
hope they enjoyed so, their all-star break um because well, sounds like that and the ninth is going to be a travel day oh, they're yeah. going to they're facing the blue jays right after so and that, oh, it's going to be wait no actually they're in anaheim for that series uh the first game was a double header so they were making up a game where the blue jays were the home team but yeah. again they still don't get much of a day off no that's more of a recovery thing um and just kind of to piggyback um i didn't add to the rundown but uh congratulations to toronto um and their fans in three days they will get their blue jays back after a year and a half of the buffalo slash dunedin blue jays they will return home to toronto as uh the government has uh lifted the restrictions on that uh so congratulations to the blue jays and their fans that i'm sure will be a great great homecoming i don't think they're at full capacity but um better than better than uh better than nothing but is that all we had for the winners report? yeah it is and after the dodger series it's not looking good <laughs> who knows hopefully they can kind of turn some fortunes around they take three out of four from the a's um, maybe maybe take care of business against Seattle, and then obviously you've got to take all three against Texas, who of course will. But get we here. we do face you at the end of August. Yeah, that's that's kind of the beginning of our um, tough run in towards the end. Our tough so, run is literally like the entire month. Yeah, <laughs> you seem to have one uh, every every uh, couple weeks to get through those, and that's just how the AL West is, how it lines up. Uh, but nice little segue into. The Padre report, obviously, look, we're going to start with the good news for the Padres, uh, and it is Adam Frazier heading to the San Diego Padres. He has been rescued from the doldrum that is the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, this is a guy who leads the National League in hits. He was an all-star. This is a guy who is someone that's going to – uh, contribute for the Padres. I think this is a really under or underrated move. Um, and I think a lot of people were expecting the Padres to go pitching. I expect them to still go pitching. Um, as I talked about earlier, obviously Max Scherzer would be what we all want. Um, apparently Jose Barrios um, of the twins is also someone that's been talked about. I will also say uh, the Padres are going to need some bullpen help because um, in the last three weeks, pretty much since the sticky stuff happened, the Padres bullpen that was number one in all of baseball um, is now ranked number 26 over the last three weeks. That's not good. Um, they might need to go out and get some bullpen help um, or who knows, it might be Denilson Lamette moving into a new role as a bullpen arm um, for the good news on the injury side of things. Ryan Weathers did return pitched well, um, in the Saturday's game against the Marlins, uh, I will say I'll get to that Saturday's game here in a minute uh, about arguably the worst umpire umpiring crew I've ever seen. Anyways, um, but going back to the Frazier deal, obviously this puts Jerkson Profar um, either on the block or in a situation where he's got to figure out what he wants to do. He could be a DFA uh, candidate because Essentially, Adam Frazier is Jerkson Profar, can play infield, outfield, but he's leading the league in hits, and Jerkson Profar is, you know, not to be to be nice about it. Um, Jerkson Profar barely hit his own weight. So Profar has been talked about, as I talked about, with the Max Scherzer deal, um, possibly in another deal if the Padres do try and bring in another arm. Uh, we'll see how that goes. There has been also a little bit of talk about Eric Hosmer being dealt, uh, I am all on board for that. Um, I think you can put Cronenworth at first base and feel good about that. You obviously have Frazier, who can play second base, or ha Sung Kim, but probably Frazier. Um, and then you get Eric Hosmer's contract off the books. But that is probably what's going to hold up the deal, would be Eric Hosmer's borderline ridiculous contract. Um, so only a certain amount of teams are able to bring that type of money on. But hey, if the Yankees feel like they're a first baseman away from winning the division, come get them. Um, I will. I'll, I'll pay for the movers. Uh, but for myself, or for the somewhat bad news, um, it was a really, really rough road trip. Seems like every time the Padres go back east, they get hit with rain delays and suspended games left and right. Obviously, it started um, with this, the now infamous Saturday game in Washington. 
uh, with um, an unfortunate situation of a, um, a shooting happening outside the stadium. Uh, there was a bit, bit of panic all around. Uh, not, not sure where the gunshots were from. A lot of people thought they were inside the stadium. The game was then suspended, made up uh, the next morning, and then just kind of going ahead. Uh, they would then face the, uh, get their first game against the Braves rained out. Uh, and then subsequently they would play a day night double header, which also the second game of that game did not get finished more rain. Um, it's unknown when that game will be resumed. The Padres were winning five to four, I believe in the bottom of the fifth of a seven inning game. Um, if they do make it up, you would have to imagine it would be late September when the Braves come to San Diego. Um, and if that's the case, the Braves would obviously be the home team for that and uh, would only play a couple innings. Hopefully the Padres can finish it out in a couple innings, um, but that will only be a seven inning game uh, for that, but that will still be down the road. And then a week later, unfortunately, uh, there were no rain delays in Miami, but there was, um, we'll, we'll call it some umpire delays. This uh, Doug Eddings had arguably the worst performance from an umpire I personally have ever seen. I've seen worse individual calls, but I've never seen one umpire blatantly um, calling balls and strikes for the other team. Two completely different strike zones, a couple pitches to Tatis that were never close. They're not even strikes in the Little League World Series. Um, and then we have a situation where Ha-Sung Kim almost gets thrown out of the game. Ha-Sung Kim doesn't speak English. How are we going to sit here and, and, and think that he's going to get thrown out of a game when he doesn't speak English. Uh, according to MLB.com, Doug Eddings missed 17 balls and strike calls. 15 of those 17 balls and strike calls went against the Padres. 15 of the 17 went against the Padres. I really do think the way the Padres play baseball is getting on a lot of people's nerves. Some of the get off my lawn baseball fans not a fan of the swag chain, not a fan of Fernando Tatis stutter stepping around the spaces. Uh, Bob Brenly talking about all the chains the guys wear. Look, this is the new era of baseball. If you don't like it, go. There, 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 nothing's going to change just because you don't like it. I really do think Doug Eddings is one of those um, that does that. And I will say the cherry on top of this was the final play of the game. Turned out to be an automatic double play. Trent Grisham, um, he decides not to slide into second base on a double play. And they say that he obstructed the um, second baseman. Now I'll say this, nowhere in the rule book does it say you have to slide into a base. Never, except for home plate. When they say when a collision is coming and uh, you, you don't run through the catcher. But anywhere else on the base pass, never once does it say you have to slide into a base at any certain time. Now they will govern how you slide, but not when you slide. So I think that's a bullcrap rule um, and or lack thereof. Uh, so the Padres were just really hosed out of the game on Saturday. But looking ahead, the Padres will get two games against Oakland um, at home before four against Colorado. And then they'll head back up to, o they'll head up to Oakland for a quick little two game stretch next week. Overall, the Padres are 58 and 44. Five and a half games back of San Francisco, three and a half games back of L.A. However, they do have quite the cushion for a playoff spot. They are six games ahead of the Cincinnati Reds um, and uh, for that final playoff spot. But as it would stand right now, the Padres would head to Los Angeles for a one-game playoff or a one-game wild card series, whatever it's called these days. Um, the winner would then face the Giants. So it's going to be tough uh, heading in these final, you know, two months of the year. Obviously, um, Brianna kind of talked about towards the end of August, the, the Braves and Angels will get rolling, but the Padres will end up facing the Giants and Dodgers a combined 21 times through uh, the end of August into September. So a lot to be decided late. Um, but for now, the Padres not able to take advantage of the fact that, look, everybody right now in the West right now in their last 10, Everybody is five and five, um, kind of crazy, um, except for the, the Diamondbacks. This might be their best stretch all year. But moving on to the three up, three down portion of things, uh, we'll start with our first up, and it is the Seattle 
Mariners. Uh, this is a team that's sticking around, much to the chagrin of Brianna's uh, Anaheim Angels. However, they did take down the hated Houston Astros, so I know Brianna will give them a little bit of a pass. But Brianna, what are your thoughts on the Seattle Mariners? Again, I didn't know who I wanted to root for this season or the, for this series. Mariners to just get the Astros down a peg or the Astros to win so we could catch up. This was one of those series where I, I was on a scale. I don't know. I mean, it's good for the Mariners, especially after what happened in the offseason. They started off really well, went down for a bit, and now they're coming right back up. Again, I would love to see the Astros go down to second just so the Angels or the Mariners can just overtake them for second. So I see this as a win. And the Mariners have won four in a row as well. Yeah. And it, it, yesterday's game wasn't even close. No. It was They're, 11 to eight. Very, very good team. Um, you brought it up. The, the, everything they went through in the offseason, we would – I don't think we would have been surprised if they were been uh, they would have been kind of like the the Diamondbacks, you know how they just were terrible. We wouldn't have been surprised if that was the case. This team is nine games above five hundred. They're fifty five and forty six. The one thing I will say though, of all the teams above five hundred, the Mariners have by far the worst run differential at minus forty nine. Just to kind of go back on it. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays are actually, uh, they're 49 and 47, so five or six games worse than the Seattle Mariners. And they have a plus 85 run differential. So that just kind of tells you. Um, but the Seattle Mariners winning close games, this bullpen, very, very good. Uh, so shout out to our loyal listener, Chad, Tim Chad, who to his credit at the beginning of the year on Twitter told me, um, and I think all of us, you know, keep an eye on Seattle. And uh, we, we've definitely had an eye on them. They are definitely a team to keep an eye on. It would be a great story for them to, who knows, um, somehow, some way. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if we're going to get the Astros out of the playoffs the way it is right now. But uh, if, if the Mariners can make the playoffs, that would be pretty cool um, for them and really uh, for that fan base because it's been a bit rough sledding, especially what happened in the offseason. But staying in the AL West, we are going to go to the first down of the week. And it is the Texas Rangers. Currently, they are 35 and 65 and have lost 12 straight ball games. Currently battling with the Baltimore Orioles for the worst record in the American League. Uh, this is a team that really since last year and that infamous 3-0 Grand Slam for Fernando Tatis, this has been a team that's been the worst in baseball. Let's just call it like it is. So the Texas Rangers kind of doing what we expected them to do, being a very bad baseball team. Brianna, what are your thoughts on the Texas Rangers? I mean, we definitely knew that it was not going to go well for them this year. I mean, Lance Lynn didn't even want to stay. So that says something. I mean, they're 25 and a half games back of Houston, but and 15 and a half games back of the Angels who are in fourth. So, I mean, they've lost all of their last 10. Orioles are six and four with a three game win streak. Pretty soon the Rangers are going to have the worst record in the American league. No doubt about it. I mean, it could be worse. They could be the Diamondbacks. Yeah. And, and just and a they're reminder, only three, they're only like three games, four games up with them. <laughs> exactly. Just a reminder to all our listeners, uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks have officially been retired from the down list. Uh, the Rangers probably are getting close to that, but yeah, um, just assume Unless the Diamondbacks are in the up category, um, if we don't talk about them, they're still in the down category. That's where they are um, really all year, unfortunately for them. Um, but moving on to our second up of the week, it will be in the NL Central. It is the St. Louis Cardinals, um, six and four in their last 10. Currently, they're 50 and 50 at 500, but they have moved up, um, unfortunately, at the uh, chagrin of the Chicago Cubs who I knew they weren't going to do well time. this year so I don't care <laughs> yeah they they were a big surprise you know a month ago this was one of the best teams or at least record wise one of the best teams in baseball and it's been tough sledding obviously the St. Louis Cardinals 50 and 50 they're a team I think at the trade deadline very interesting if they can get an arm if they can get a guy like Max Scherzer 
um, or, or, or an arm. And then hopefully, you know, Jack Flaherty can get back somewhat soon. Uh, keep an eye on them. But um, they are still eight games behind Milwaukee, but only one game behind Cincinnati, seven games behind S- San Diego for the playoff spot. But uh, Brianna, what are your thoughts, St. Louis Cardinals? I mean, they, they deserve to be in third right now after everything that they've done. I mean, the Cubs have just gone downhill since that no hitter. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me. But again, St. Louis was on the down list for quite a few weeks. And now they're only eight games back of Milwaukee and half a game up of the Cubs. So if anybody can turn it around, it's going to be them. We, I believe we all kind of wished it was the Twins but <laughs> for our predictions, but yeah, it's not going to happen. Perfect. Perfect, perfect segue into our second down of the week. And it is those Minnesota Twins. It's done. It's over. I'm officially ready to turn in my bet slip and say, I got it wrong. The Minnesota Twins are not going to win the NL Central. I had them in second. Yep. (laughs) You win. Um, At the very least, uh, the, the White Sox will finish higher than the Twins. There's no doubt about it. That was definitely coming into the year. One of our... Um, I guess disagreements, if you will, and Brianna definitely uh, took the cake on that I one. I still Currently, don't understand how they're in first, though, with all of their injuries. I know. I just it's don't nuts. understand. It's crazy. Um, I mean, the fact that everyone in their division is negative run differential, at least minus 31, um, and they're at plus 114, that helps. But you're right. I mean, and then they had the Yerman Mercedes. We didn't even talk about Yerman Mercedes retiring for 12 hours. Um, after being sent down so they're they're dealing with a lot of crazy stuff but in terms of the twins they are 15 games under 500 16 and a half behind the white Sox, and in last place all by themselves behind kansas city and detroit two teams that i don't think either of us um even even brianna saying hey the white Sox are going to win the division didn't expect minnesota to be this bad um, and I don't think it's changing anytime soon, especially with the situation of obviously Nelson Cruz being sent away. Jose Barrios has been talked about. Um, there's really no point for Minnesota to keep it together. It's time to blow it up and rebuild all over again. But what are your thoughts, Brianna, on the Minnesota Twins? I mean, they did just lose three or four to us. So I don't care. I'm just happy we beat them. Yeah. You got to take care of business against those teams at the bottom. No doubt about it. And to uh, keep Minnesota down, that's definitely, definitely a plus. But uh, for our final ups and downs, we are heading to the American League East. First team we're going to be talking about, the Tampa Bay Rays. Didn't move up in the standings um, per se, but they moved closer to the Boston Red Sox. Uh, Tampa Bay, 7-3 in their last 10 60-40 60-40 and 40 overall, game and a half behind the Red Sox. Um, look, this is going to be a good, probably, fight to the uh, finish in this division. I think Boston still probably has a little bit of an advantage, but Nelson Cruz coming to the American League East, that's, that's going to be very interesting. But, Brianna, what are your thoughts on Tampa Bay uh, getting into the AL East race, if you will? I mean, to be fair, we didn't think Boston was going to be this good. I mean, we felt, I believe we both said that Tampa Bay was going to win this division. So I still think they're going to get close either way. I believe they're going to be in the playoffs. So they just have to keep moving forward, keep the Yankees just as far back as they can and just try to catch up to Boston. But I mean, they're only a game and a half back, so it could be worse. Oh yeah, 100%. I don't think it's time to scoreboard watch or anything. They just need to go out, win baseball games. Um, I will throw myself under the bus in this one. Um, I picked the Yankees to win the AL East. Yeah, not, not good, not good. But I, I did pick the Brewers to win the NL Central just so I can throw one in there that I did at least get one right or at least one as of right now right. But the Yankees, uh, perfect segue into our final down of the show. And yes, it is those Yankees. Once again, not moving up or down in the division per se, still in third place. They're 51 and 47, only five and five in their last 10. Um, Nine and a half games back behind Boston. But a big reason why I want to bring this this team up 
two reasons. First of all, we go back last week, the Yankee fan who hit Alex Verdugo with a um, ball after throwing the home run ball back. Look, I, I know it looked bad and I know, and Alex Verdugo has every right to be upset, but if you really think that this drunk ass fan has the accuracy and arm strength to throw that ball from the bleachers and hit Verdugo uh, perfectly. Um, if you think that's the case, you should ask your team to sign him um, because that that's the case. Uh, this is an unfortunate accident. Obviously you didn't have to even throw it in the area of Alex Verdugo. I don't know if he did. We go back to a couple years back when Giancarlo Stanton was actually hit. He was rounding the bases and he was hit by a ball uh, that had, kind of throw came back into it now that was more impressive than anything because somebody threw from the bleachers to the infield dirt that was pretty crazy um the fan has been banned for life um although i will say the only thing that necessarily means is he can't buy tickets under his name i don't think you know there's security at every stadium that has his mug shot up there i don't think that's the case but anyways um another bit of a downfall for the Yankees or I guess low point for this year was this past Sunday um, heading into the eighth inning. The, uh, Domingo Herman was pitching a no hitter. The Yankees were up for nothing by the end of the eighth inning. Not only was the uh, no hitter gone, but the, uh, the lead was gone as well. And the, the Red Sox took the lead five to four, won the game five to four, Another just absolute downfall for the Yankees, who, like I said, nine and a half games behind their bitter rival, the Boston Red Sox. Brianna, um, believe me, this is kind of like with the Astros. We uh, we get a little bit of joy talking a little bit of smack about the Yankees after all they did, uh, all buying all their championships in the 90s. But what are your thoughts uh, on the New York Yankees? It wasn't even Jermon's fault. Yeah. He got, he got taken out at the end of the seven. Right after. And the guy that was that took over was the one that gave up those four runs on four hits with no outs. So it wasn't even his fault. Yeah. In he all gave honesty, up a double, I think, in. to Verdugo, and then they pulled him, and it was all downhill from there. In all honesty, they should have just kept him in. Yeah. And that yeah, is a big It's another Blake Snell it. situation. Yeah. Um, definitely not, not, not quite the stage that we saw for Blake Snell, but yeah, it's, it's true. I, I agree with you. I think in those situations, um, it, 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 you need to stick with the guy. Obviously, um, he, he made, you know, one mistake, uh, gave up the double, but that's just a devastation for the Yankees. I think for Aaron Boone, he's got to be on the hot seat. They don't, you don't win championships or you don't make playoffs or you don't really compete at the highest level uh, in New York with the Yankees, then they're going to push you out. Um, that is not a very patient front office. Uh, so a lot of pressure now on Aaron Boone to at least try and right the ship, figure it out. But once again, no sympathy here on this podcast for anything Yankees related, but that will conclude another episode of the change up Brianna. Final thoughts? Uh, nothing here, but I'm just excited to get started out in Nebraska and actually get to cover something. Amen. Yeah, very excited for you, Brianna. Once again, make sure you go and follow Brianna on Twitter, BWinner12, uh, and keep up to, with all that she'll be doing out there. And of course, obviously, we will be back with you next Tuesday. Uh, as we get closer, um, we'll have obviously some finality to the trade deadline. Hopefully Max Scherzer and Jose Barrios and Craig Kimbrell and Trevor Story and everybody else will have been traded to the Padres for nobody. Hopefully that's the case. Um, who knows? Maybe uh, the Angels go out there, shock the world. They bring in a Max Scherzer. That'd be pretty crazy, but we'll see how that goes. Um, obviously we'll be back just, with you just next. Just imagine time. Otani, Scherzer, and Trout on the same team. <laughs> My goodness, that would be a, that would be a criminal offense for them not to make the playoffs, unfortunately. But yeah, it would be a, a lot of fun if that is the case. So uh, that is all we have for you today on the changeup presented by the First Off the Bench Podcast Network. It is time for you all to go wash your hands and stop hating everybody. We'll talk to you all very soon. Take care. <laughs>